So welcome to osteology classes. So today's topic is on sacrum. The sacrum here we can see it is a large flattened triangular wedge shaped bone formed by the fusion of five sacral vertebra. And sacrum articulates on the either side with the hip bone to form the sacroiliac joint. This is ilium of hip bone. So here is the sacroiliac joint where the sacrum articulates with the ilium of hip bone. And this sacrum it forms the posterior part of bony pelvis and supports the vertebral column. So it is the posterior part of bony pelvis where it supports the vertebral column and transmits the weight of the body to the pelvic girdle through sacroiliac joints. The sacrum presents base apex and four surfaces. So the base is the upper part of the sacrum which is the broader part of the sacrum is the base. Apex is the lower end of the sacrum. We can see it articulates with the coccyx below and it has got the four surfaces. So what we are seeing is the smooth pelvic surface. and two lateral surfaces so this is the lateral view of the sacrum showing the lateral surface right and left lateral surface and a dorsal surface base of the sacrum it is formed by the superior surface of the first sacral vertebra so what you are seeing in this image is the base which is the superior surface of first sacral vertebra. The upper surface of the body uh, of the first sacral vertebra articulates with the L5 to form lumbosacral joint. So here is the upper surface of first sacral vertebra. We can see in the center the body, it articulates with the L5 that is the 5th lumbar vertebra to form lumbosacral joint. And the anterior border of the median part of uh, base is called as sacral promontory. So the most prominent projection from the anterior uh, part of the body of the sacrum that is uh, from the base of the sacrum is termed as sacral promontory. The right and left parts are fan shaped and represents the upper surfaces of lateral masses of sacrum which are termed as alae. So singularly ala and both the sides they are considered as alae of sacrum. And the lateral masses presents the fused coastal and transverse elements of the sacral vertebra. So the lateral masses are nothing but the fused coastal and transverse elements of the sacral vertebra. Next regarding the vertebral foramen which lies behind the body of the sacrum and it is triangular. So if you see this opening is the triangular which is the vertebral foramen. So it is triangular in cross section and pedicles are short and directed backwards and laterally. So we can see the pedicles they are short and directed backwards and laterally. Laminae are quite oblique. So we can see the laminae joins to form a centered projection which should be the spinous process. So this uh, the plate of bones are called as the laminae and here is the superior articulating process which contains a superior articulating facet and connection between the body and the superior articulating process is the pedicles and the pedicles are short and directed backwards and little laterally. The transverse process you can see it is quite massive and they are all fused together 
with the corresponding coastal transverse elements of lower sacral vertebrae to form a broader sloping mass called as ala of sacrum. So here is the dorsal view of sacrum where we can see the spinous process from the first spinous tubercle. So this is the spinous process. These, this is the ala of sacrum and this is the superior articulating facet and this is the body of S1. The superior articulating process, so this is the superior articulating process which bears a facet which is the superior articulating facet. So superior articulating process forms uh, the most prominent and they project upwards and they flank the opening of uh, sacral canal. So which is nothing but the vert vertebral canal is the sacral canal. So you can see they are flanking over the sacral canal or the vertebral canal. So sacral canal is formed by the superimposed vertebral foramina and of uh, sacral vertebra. So upper end it is continuous with the vertebral canal of lumbar vertebra and lower end it opens as sacral hiatus. So inner aspect if you see the gaps between the vertebra that is called uh, intervertebral foramina and we can see the pelvic and dorsal sacral foramina. So what you are seeing is the dorsal surface of the sacrum. So these foramina are dorsal sacral foramina. And in this image we can appreciate ventral sacral foramina. So the ventral and the dorsal sacral foramina, they communicate with the sacral canal via the intervertebral foramina. So the sacral canal contains lower part of cauda equina that means they are made up of sacral and the coccygeal nerve roots and phylum terminal that is the dural tube and arachnoid matter extend up to the S2 level and below the S2 level it continues as a fibrous continuation that is uh, dura matter alone continues and attaches to the dorsal surface of coccyx where it exists out through the sacral hiatus and it is also surrounded by the spinal meninges up till the level of S2 we have all the three spinal meninges that is a dura matter, arachnoid matter and pia matter. Beyond the level of S2 only the dura matter continues to form a fibrous sheath and lateral sacral vessels are also the contents of sacral canal. The apex, apex of the uh, sacrum, it is a lower narrow blunt extremity formed by the inferior surface of the body of fifth sacral vertebra. So the inferior surface of the fifth sacral vertebra will form the apex of the sacrum. And this fifth sacral vertebra, it bears an oval facet for the articulation with coccyx to form sacrococcygeal joint. Let's see the surfaces of the sacrum. So first we shall begin with the pelvic surface. So the pelvic surface of the sacrum is concave and the four transverse ridges that indicate the lines of fusion of uh, sacral vertebra. So the five sacral vertebra fuse at these four transverse ridges. And the muscle pyriformis arises from the body of the middle three sacral vertebra. So middle three sacral vertebra, one, two, three. So the middle three sacral vertebra provides origin to piriformis muscle like letter E. We can see it is like inverted letter E where it gets uh, origin from the middle three sacral, uh, sacral vertebra from pelvic surface. Then pelvic surface is related to median sacral vessels. So here we can see the median sacral vessels. So median sacral vessels are related to the pelvic surface in the median plane. 
and pelvis is also related to sympathetic trunks which are related to the pelvic surface along the medial margins of pelvic sacral foramina. And we can see the pyriformis here. The upper two and half sacral vertebrae are related to the parietal peritoneum except for the site of attachment of uh, medial limb of sigmoid mesocolon. So here we can see the reflection of parietal peritoneum. So in this image we can see the reflection of parietal peritoneum related to the sacrum. This is sacrum. And lower two and half vertebrae are related to the rectum but uh, separated from S3 vertebra. So this is rectum and separated from S3 vertebra by bifurcation of superior rectal arteries. So on each side there are superior rectal arteries bifurcation which separates the S3 vertebra from rectum. The pelvic sacral foramina, so here are the pelvic sacral foramina. So these foramina transmit ventral rami of corresponding upper four sacral nerves. So we can see the ventral rami coming out of the sacral foramina. And also the lateral sacral arteries which are along with this ventral rami. Next the dorsal surface of the sacrum. The dorsal surface of the sacrum it is rough and irregular and convex and the most prominent features on the dorsal surface of the sacrum are presence of five vertical crests. So the median sacral crest, so the median sacral crest is the rough elevation in the middle, is the median sacral crest. And two intermediate uh, sacral crests. So this intermediate sacral crust which are present on the either side of the median crust are formed by the fusion of articular process of sacral vertebra. So all the articular superior and inferior articular process they join to form this intermediate sacral crust and there are two lateral sacral crusts. Here is one and this side is one. So this is the lateral sacral crust on each side. Let's see the attachments of muscles on dorsal surface. The erector spinae muscle arises from an elongated U-shaped linear area involving the continuous rows of the spinous and transverse tubercles. So the line I am showing is the origin of erector spinae muscle. The next muscle which gains its origin from the sacrum is uh, multifidus arises from the area enclosed by U-shaped origin of erector spinae. The dorsal rami of upper four sacral spinal nerves reach the surface by piercing the multifidus and erector spinae. So you can see the dorsal foramina, they are covered by these muscles. So the dorsal sacral nerves, they come out through the sacral foramina by piercing these two muscles. The laminae of the fifth sacral vertebra fail to fuse resulting a huge shaped uh, hiatus which is called as sacral hiatus. So this is U shaped hiatus is the sacral hiatus and lateral to the lamina are the four uh, articular tubercles in line with the superior articulating process of the first sacral vertebra. So we can see the lamina. Inferior articulating process of the fifth sacral vertebra projects downwards as a sacral cornu on either side of sacral hiatus. 
so on the either side of the sacral hiatus the projections are called as sacral cornu or horns so this sacral cornua are nothing but the modifications of inferior articulating process of fifth sacral vertebra and lastly about the sacral hiatus so here is the sacral hiatus opening it is a u shaped gap at the lower end of the sacrum and uh, where the structures emerging through the sacral hiatus are uh, s5 nerves that is the fifth sacral nerves coccygeal nerve so we can see s5 nerves on each side then coccygeal nerve and also the phylum terminal so these are the structures exiting out through sacral hiatus the four dorsal foramina transmit the dorsal rami of the corresponding upper four sacral spinal nerves lateral surfaces the ala of the sacrum is related to four structures from medial to lateral side so we can remember abbreviation as oils so i will say from medial to lateral side first so the medial most structure which is related is the sympathetic chain and next to sympathetic chain is the lumbosacral trunk lateral to the lumbosacral trunk is the iliolumbar artery and lateral to the iliolumbar artery is the obturator nerve so you can remember the abbreviation as oils from lateral to medial side o i l s so that's how you can remember the relations of the ala of sacrum so ventral side of the ala of sacrum on each side it is related from lateral to medial first is the obturator nerve then iliolumbar artery then lumbosacral trunk and sympathetic chain so each lateral surface is the lateral aspect of lateral mass formed by the fusion of transverse and costal elements of sacral vertebra so the upper wider part bears a inverted l shaped articular surface anteriorly and deeply pitted area posteriorly so inverted l shaped articular surface anteriorly so this is the pelvic surface or anterior view anterior aspect of the sacrum and this is the dorsal or posterior aspect of sacrum so what you are seeing here in this image is the lateral surface of the sacrum where we can see a l shaped articular surface anteriorly and the auricular surface it is so called because it resembles to the auricle so this l shaped articular surface appears to be like an ear external ear so it is called as auricular surface the auricular surface uh, contains the facets which articulates with the corresponding auricular surface of the ilium to form sacroiliac joint the rough lateral part of the ala gives origin to iliacus muscle anteriorly so the rough area behind the auricular surface gives attachment to strong interosseous sacroiliac ligament so here the rough area of the ilium and the lateral surface of the sacrum on the lateral side so here this is the sacroiliac joint and where it is protected by sacroiliac ligament so here is the sacroiliac ligament which is present between the or rough auricular surface and to the ilium so the lower uh, narrow part of the lateral surface provides attachment to ligaments called sacrotuberous ligaments sacrospinous ligaments and coccygeus muscle so first we shall do with the ligaments sacrotuberous ligament so this is from the sacrum to the ischial tuberosity so this is the sacrotuberous ligament
and from the sacrum to the spinous process is the that is the ischial spine is the sacrospinous ligament which converts the greater sciatic notch into greater sciatic foramen and here is the lesser sciatic foramen and this is the ischial spine where it attaches to form sacrospinous ligament and this is the ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity provides attachment to sacrotuberous ligaments. Apart from these ligaments, uh, the sacrum also provides origin to gluteus maximus and coccygeus muscle. So, gluteus maximus attaches from posterior aspect on lateral side. And below would be the coccygeus. The next comes to sacral index. Sacral index, it is the ratio between the length and the breadth of the sacrum and it is expre expressed by a formula as the breadth which is taken at the most wider part of the sacrum that is at the level of ala of the sacrum crossing the sacral promontory is the breadth of the sacrum and the length, the length is the vertical midline length is the length of the sacrum. So, the formula is breadth by length into 100. So, this is called as the sacral index and it is higher in females than in males. The average uh, sacral index in females it is around 116 and in males it is around 112. A small note to see here, this is erector spinae muscle which is gaining origin from the sacrum like letter U and here is the multifidus muscle which uh, gains its origin within the concavity of letter U from the dorsal surface of sacrum. Let us see some clinical correlations of sacrum. The first uh, condition is the sacralization. So, it is the term where uh, the sacralization means uh, incorporation of L5 that is the fifth lumbar vertebra and first coccygeal vertebra in the sacrum. So, in sacralization, the number of sacral foramina increased unilaterally or bilaterally. So, we can see the sacral foramina, they are increased in this image unilaterally and sometimes it can be bilaterally. The next condition is lumbarization. Lumbarization in this condition, the first sacral vertebra is separated from the sacrum and fused with L5. So, this first sacral vertebra, it gets separated from the sacrum and fuses with the L5. As a result, the number of sacral foramina is reduced in into three pairs. So, that is called as lumbarization. So, this completes the osteology of sacrum. Thank you.